Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. This video is about using an old control interface called X10 and I'm going to describe how you can use it to be controlled within your Home Assistant environment. For those of you that are not aware, Home Assistant is an open source program. This program can be run on simple computers such as the Raspberry Pi or in virtual environments on things like Proxmox. It uses simple YAML programming to configure and automate your house. X10, on the other hand, is an old interface that uses the power line to communicate between devices. The two of them are not very compatible yet. So if you think this is interesting, hang out with me while I try to describe how to set up Home Assistant with Mocha D, which eventually controls X10 controls. So here we go. Two hours and 55 minutes since anyone was here. It is Thursday, August 27, 2020. Good morning. It is now 5 minutes to 11. Sorry, the weather is not available. Warning, there were alarms recorded. At 3.59.3 UPS alarm, power failure. System status is. CPU temperature is 48.7 degrees Celsius. CPU processor is running at 4.0% capacity. Temperature sensors report there are no problems. Checking the temperature on three sensors. Temperature for bedroom rest high radio temp sensor is 28.0 degrees C. Temperature for home automation system is 36.2 degrees C. Sorry about the noise and the jittery camera work, but I wanted to show you my original home automation system, which I call HASS. HASS started out as a microchip PIC controller watching my sump pump and emailing me if there's a problem with the pump. Feature creep came in and I started adding sensors. I started adding controls using the X10 interface over a serial firecracker device. Everything worked very well until I ran out of physical memory in the PIC controller. That's when I found the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is a small computer running Linux. I converted the almost 10,000 lines of C code to 2,000 lines of Python. This did work and still works and I'm running it today. However, Home Assistant has many features that I don't have the time or desire to make. I don't like reinventing the wheel and if somebody's made a better product, I'm more than willing to use it. So I'm running Home Assistant in parallel with my old Haas system. The problem is Haas knows how to do X10 controls really well where Home Assistant has a little bit of trouble with it. Now we'll use a little bit of network magic. Mocha D is a Linux TCP gateway daemon for the X10 controls. It's set up to use the CM15A radio frequency and power line controller, as well as the CM19A, which is the RF controller. Both of them use a USB interface. My favorite Linux distro is Debian, so I've created a virtual machine on Proxmox with a Debian server. Let's start with my Proxmox configuration. My Proxmox is running on an Intel NUC i5 microcomputer. It is a small computer, it has a fairly large SSD drive and lots of RAM. In that I've configured my Haas I.O. If you go to Dr. Z's channel, he'll show you how to create your Haas I.O. environment for that. It doesn't need very much resources. I'm using four gigabytes, two processors, and a hard drive of uh, 128 gig. That's because I use some of that space for my Motion I. In addition, I've got Debian running, and it is just a two gig machine with one processor. It's not very uh, resource hungry, and it runs just fine. So the Debian machine is running the Mocha D server, which sends TCP information back and forth to HASIO. If we look at HASIO, I've got some X10 lights over here. This is the driveway light and I can turn it on. You may be able to hear the click. It is upstairs where the uh, switch is. It just turned on. 
and it just turned off. There's a little bit of delay with X10 because it sends the information over the power lines and it does take a bit of time. In addition to that, in the basement I have uh, right here the laundry light. I can turn it on and then I can turn it off. And it's really that simple. It's simple because I've configured the sensors and the switches within Home Assistant to talk over TCP IP to the Debian server running uh, Proxmox. Now, if we were to log into Proxmox, into the virtual machine, you can now see that we're into the terminal. Let's make it larger. If we do an LS USB, we can see that right here we've got the X10 interface that is using the CM15A, which is the power line and RF frequency. We can tell something like X10A8 on, and it just turned on. Now we can tell it to go off. The way this command is working is it's actually sending a netcat command. So if we were to go to ct slash slash local slash bin cat x10. So there's the command. All we're doing is we're echoing an RF command. In this case, I was using A8, which is house code A, device 8. Send it through netcat with a wait through the local host 1099, which is the TCP IP port that it's running on. So you can test it very easily within your Debian environment. Uh, what else can we take a look at? The version of Mo Mocha D that we're using is version 1.16. You can download that from uh, the SourceForge. I also tried Hey You. Hey You does not work with uh, the CM15A. So if I say Hey You, turn on A8. It didn't do it. So Hey You is, is useless for the CM15A and probably the 19A as well. However, Mocha D does run quite well with the CM15A and I have had intermittent problems with the 19A. So I would recommend staying with the 15A. Now if we do uh, a command to see what the status is, you can see that it's found CM15A here and it's running. Um, we can also go Mocha or Mocha D dash D. And it's saying it couldn't find it, but it's it's because it's already running. This is uh, the little simple website that I've made up showing me what my server is and what the uh, the server is used for. I've got a Samba running. Debian is obviously the operating system, and I'm using Mocha D to run my X10. One thing I had a little difficulty with when I set this up was if you go into Debian, your uh, new virtual machine, under hardware, you have to pass through the USB device. So in this case, what I did is I used the USB port and I chose the X10 wireless uh, device, which is a CM15A. Once you do that, that gives that port on your NUC access through your virtual machine. So it'll appear on your virtual machine as if it's attached directly. Now for a little bit of Home Assistant magic. So in your configuration.yaml, you need to describe what your X10 is going to be doing with your USB interface. So in my case, I'm using Mocha D. You put the IP address of the server. In this case, I'm using my Debian server. The port that the TCP IP control is coming on is 1099. That's all you have to do to make Home Assistant talk to the Mocha D server. Once you've done that, you then want to create an entry in lights uh, right here. And in lights, 
what you do is you create an entry for your X10 lights. We're describing it as a platform of Mocha D and then you describe the devices. So in this case for my driveway lights, house code A, unit code 8 is my driveway and it is an RF command. I can do the same thing with the corner lights, test sockets, any other type of thing where you have an on off control. I haven't experimented with the dimming features because I haven't really needed it. I want a light to come on. I want it to go off. I don't really care about the brightness. Usually the ones that I'm controlling are ones that I just want to turn on and off when I come into a room or when I want to have the outside lights come on at dark or off at say 11 or 12 o'clock at night so I save some hydropower. Once you've defined the lights in your lights.yaml and you've configured Mocha D in your configuration .yaml then you want to create your user interface. I use Lovelace so in my UI Lovelace.yaml I have got an entry for a glance card it's showing uh, oh sorry I've got an entry for the glance card it's showing outside X10 lights it describes the entity as the light.driveway which is described in light.yaml I've given it a name and I've also got the corner lights. So now if we were to go back to our overview, under our main floor we can see that we've now got a glance card showing the outside X10 lights with the driveway lights and the front corner lights. So when I click on this and turn it on, it's actually sending a command through the light entity which is sent a TCP IP command over to the Mocha D server which in turn tells it to run uh, an X10 command on that Mocha D. Sounds complicated, but it's not bad once you figure out how it all goes together. If you're new to this networking thing, especially with Home Assistant, Proxmox, Debian, it can get a little confusing. So let's do a little review. First thing you want to do is to create Home Assistant on either a Raspberry Pi or a virtual machine on something like Proxmox. This enables you to have Home Assistant running in your house. Time to automate. The next step is to create a Debian server and on that server you want to install Mocha D. I've left the links down in the description so you can easily find all this. If you're using Proxmox for your Debian then you need to add a USB port and configure it for use with your CM15A. Then you want to set up Home Assistant so that it can actually talk to the Mocha D server. In configuration YAML you want to reference Mocha D on port 1099. Then you want to edit a file called lights.yaml for all your X10 entities. This describes all the physical devices. And finally you want to have a user interface so you set up UI lovelace.yaml so that you can easily turn things on and off. Once you have everything configured you can create automations to turn them on at dusk, off at sunrise, things of that nature. Now those previously obsolete X10 controls can be used within Home Assistant and other smart devices like Google Home and Amazon Echo. With simple automations you can turn things to come on at certain times or when people move into the room or leave the room. I hope you found this video entertaining and I want to thank you for watching it. This channel has no sponsors and there is no reason for me to make these videos except for sharing information. I'd really appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up hit the subscribe and maybe even ring the bell. Thanks again.